Hey YouTube, it's the test lead. And today's video is about entry level interview questions for test automation engineers. This involves SDETs, automation analysts, whatever they want to call it, whatever buzzwords, this incorporates that. I also have videos for interview prep for entry level SQL and QA interview questions. So as an automation engineer, you have to know both of those skill sets as well. You have to be able to query databases and use SQL as well as know test management tools and testing concepts in a QA level. So watch both of those videos as well. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I provide a lot of content for QA and automation engineers. And now back to the video. If you feel lost about any other questions for this entry level interview question prep, don't be afraid. Leave any questions that you have below in the comment section and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. I will also provide future videos going more in depth to automation engineering and everything you need to know. For this video, I'll provide 10 questions. Because this interview is more for entry level people, the questions are more geared towards definitions as compared to experience because you don't have experience yet. So first off, what automation tools are you familiar with? You can say things such as JMeter, Selenium. Selenium is probably a requirement because Every automation engineer should not use Selenium. It's like a standard. I uh, say so you can say other things such as JMeter, which is like for load testing, performance testing. RFT, which is rational functional tester. Just remember anything that you say for this answer, be prepared to talk about it. So actually research it a little bit before saying it as an answer. Don't just say, oh, I know RFT and then ask you to elaborate on it and you can't answer that. That's how you get stuck. So remember, prepare for this question and have like three, maybe four different tools that you're familiar with and that you researched. Question number two, how do you decide what to automate or what not to automate? A typical answer would be any process or test that's gonna be repeated numerous times is a good candidate for automation testing. Compared to if something's just gonna be tested one time, it doesn't make sense to set the automation tool and take time to create automation tests for just one test for one time. That's better off as a manual test because the hours it'll take to set up an environment to map everything out. Whereas a person can just do a few clicks and in five minutes, they've done a manual test. For that instance, it's better for manual tests. So if it's a one-time test, manual. If it's a repeated process, automation test. Number three, what is an API and do you know any tools to test APIs? An API is an application programming interface, and it is a way for two or more computer programs to communicate with each other. APIs can be tested using tools such as Postman. Number four, what is a testing framework? A testing framework is a set of guidelines, concepts, and best coding practices for creating an environment where your tests will be automated. It should be independent from the application that you are testing. So if you have a development application, it should be in one solution, then your automation solution should be in a totally different solution. So that's what it means by being separate than the application itself. And then within a framework you might have different projects like, oh, this is the assertion project, this is the testing project, all in one solution. As I said, it might seem like a lot for you right now, but high level, we'll just be able to talk about it. In my future videos, I'll go more in depth. Number five, what are some advantages to automation testing against manual testing? So one advantage is speed. A test can be executed a lot faster with an automation script as compared to a manual tester clicking away. Next, consistency. If I run my automation test 100 times, it'll do the exact same thing 100 times. As compared to a manual tester, they may get fatigued or overlook certain things. It might be a slightly different test each time. And last but not least, resources. For a manual test, you need at least one person clicking away throughout the whole test. For an automation script, I can just press a button and then come back in five minutes and have my result already there. So I'm becoming a resource that can be allocated for other things in the meantime. Number six, now they wanna see your thought process. How would you automate the login functionality of a web page? I will first look at the project requirements to confirm the scope and expected behaviors. I would then identify a possible test scenarios such as a valid username and valid password. 
an invalid username and a valid password, an invalid username and an invalid password, a valid username and an invalid password. I would then prepare a data file with a list of inputs. I would then launch Selenium or whatever automation tool will be used to test it. I would then map out the web elements for the username, password, and login button on the website. Then for each test scenario, I would read the data from the data file, enter it on the fields that I mapped out, and then click the login button. I would then validate that each expected behavior for each scenario happens after the login button is pressed. Number seven, what is a Selenium web driver? A Selenium web driver is a framework that allows for your automation code to interact with the web browser. Examples include Chrome driver, Edge driver, and Firefox driver. As I said in the beginning, Selenium is one of the most universal automation tools, so you have to know a lot about it. It's kind of one of the standards for doing user interface automation testing. Number eight, what web browsers does Selenium support? Selenium supports Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari, Edge, and Opera browsers. Now these last two questions are gonna be more about coding. Number nine, what is an exception in coding? And if you know an exception might be thrown, how would you handle it? An exception is an unplanned event that occurs while programming is running that disrupts the flow of its instructions. If I know that an exception may occur, I would create a try catch block in the code where I would try my action, I would be able to handle it in a catch in my catch block. And number 10, in whatever programming language that you like, because they never force you to just use one programming language, so whatever you're most comfortable with, print the reverse of this string. I like to code and test. So for this, we'll be using Python because that's the easiest way to do it. So in Python, text equals I like to code and test. We have a new variable called text reverse that equals text colon colon negative one, which reverses it. And then you'll print the new variable text reverse. And that's it. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you felt overwhelmed at all, it's okay. Just take it slow. As I said, I'll create future courses that go more in depth into all these topics. Don't forget, subscribe to my email list. You'll get a lot of content. You'll get my courses for discounted prices. You'll be the first to know everything. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or ideas for future videos, please leave them below. If you want a video just like this, please take care. And most importantly, don't forget to learn something new today.